to do the match commentary that uh, you were all promised there up in the title. It is going to be a matchup between Lunatic Esports as well as SapphireClona.com. Now, of course, if you're looking at this thing on paper, it's looking a lot like it's going to be in Lunatic's uh, favor, I guess you could say. Uh, as far as how things stand uh, right now is if you look at the invite division standings, Lunatic Esports is ranked number three, right below Area 51 in Exertus. Now, of course, the ESCA invite league standings are a bit skewed because Cloud9 and I by Power have not been present to play their matches, and so therefore, uh, you know, their records are obviously not the same as the teams that have played all their matches. So, of course, the results are a bit skewed, but it's still safe to say that Lunatic Esports, with their 5-2 and two record in the ESCA invite, had definitely put themselves inside of playoff contention. And now, if you can compare that over to SapphireClone.com, currently ranked number seven in the SCA standings with a two and three record, they've obviously not had the same solid start as Lunatic has had. You also take a look over at the Sevo standings, where Lunatic is also currently ranked number three. They have played one Mirage match where they beat Justice Pro, which is an ESCA premier team, in a close match of 16 to 13. And so that is kind of like the one match we can kind of go off of as far as how. Uh, you know, maybe how well that this Lunatic team can play the map, but of course, you know, it's tough to say. SapphireClona.com, on the other hand, is also scheduled to play Lunatic on Sevo on this exact same map, uh, so that's kind of interesting. So they haven't really played Mirage yet in League Play, and so therefore we don't really have a whole lot of history necessarily go off of in that regard. Uh, and so I guess that's kind of where we're at. Um, now, if you're just looking at the players on uh, these two teams, of course, we do have all five starting members of Lunatic Esports already inside the server, which, of course, makes it very convenient and very easy to be able to talk about them now. Uh, as uh, we look over here, we got Fugly, who's kind of an up-and-coming star in North America, I guess you could say. He was probably a bit unknown to most people in the CSGO community, especially in internationally, but I'm, I'm kind of talking in terms of within North America, obviously. None of these players have really been super heard of throughout the international community. But yeah, I mean, if you look at... Uh, at, uh, at Fugly, I mean, he's definitely been a pretty impressive player online with the rifle, uh, especially. Uh, definitely a kind of a player to look out for that can be kind of a, I would say, an impact player within this team as far as the frags that he can potentially contribute. Um, but, I mean, he has yet to maybe prove himself on land or anything like that, which I think that's something that a lot of North American teams struggle with is the inability to have enough tournaments to attend to have their chance to prove themselves on land. So, uh, it's definitely kind of, you know, one of those one of those things. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I think this Lunatic team definitely, along with Fugly, have a chance to make it to land. It'll be up to them whether or not they can translate their online skills to the land environment. Move on to Shazam, who is probably the most seasoned CS player on the team as far as you know, lands intended and, and teams played on and, and league experience between this game as well as Counter-Strike Source. And so I guess you would have to kind of maybe give him the slight nod compared to everyone else on the roster as far as the experience that he has in the game of Counter-Strike. Uh, solid Opper, that's definitely his primary role on the Lunatic Esports team. Also a pretty popular streamer, so I'm sure you guys have probably seen him around on Twitch quite a bit. Uh, and so he, he's probably a familiar face to most of you and doesn't really need that much of an introduction. So there you have that. Uh, look over at Juvenile, who is um, one of the guys who kind of helps call strats on this team. I think Dats also has a lot to do with in-game leading for this team, if not the official in-game leader. Uh, of course, he used to opt for this team before they picked up Shazam. He still has the ability to pick up the sniper from time to time, if need be. Uh, but of course, he was a big name in Call of Duty and other first-person shooters on the PC. Had a small run with Curse way back in the day in 2012. Played a little bit of amateur play after that, and now he's kind of made his return to invite last season with Never Good Enough. He is the team captain as well, so that kind of gives you a little bit of a hint there. So you move on to the next two players, which are Naf and Daps, the other two returning members from the Never Good Enough roster from last season, which is the roster that they get picked up by Lunatic Esports. Naf, of course, also being well known for being kind of a young gun. He's a young, younger guy. I think he's the same age as Swag. I think they're both like 17 or something like that. Uh, and so he, he's kind of one of those like youngsters that uh, maybe North American can can mold into a top uh, competitor in CSGO. Uh, then you have Daps, who uh, is also kind of a younger guy, but uh, he's definitely been around the scene for a while. Uh, he played some Source, he played CSGO, he's been uh, on a couple of other uh, top teams, I guess, in the amateur divisions as well as an in invite. So. Uh, you know, someone that is familiar uh, to most people probably as well. And that's kind of what I have as far as players go so far. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about Sapphire Kelowna players whenever they get inside the server and make it a little bit easier. 
Also, maybe take a minute to breathe. Some people do say I talk a bit too fast and maybe a bit too much, so I do apologize for that. But I'm kind of using uh, community feedback here. A lot of people kind of complain that the, the pre-match time uh, on the stream with me was, you know, kind of bland or didn't really serve a purpose. And they kind of wanted to see me use the time before the match started to maybe talk about the history of the teams and players as well as the map and things like that. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to appease those people out there. Maybe some of you newcomers who are new to CSGO, new to Counter-Strike, maybe don't necessarily know all the players and teams in North America. Maybe you don't necessarily understand uh, the map and strategy and things like that. So I try to use this time to, to help talk about those things to kind of help out the new people. If you're not new and you already know all this stuff, I do apologize for uh, maybe it's sounding like I'm talking down to you like you're dumb. That's definitely not what I'm trying to accomplish. Once the match starts, you'll get your normal commentary. But, like I said, I like to use the pre-game time to just kind of talk things out a bit about the about about the scene and about the map. So, we can actually talk about the map a little bit. I mean, this is Mirage. Um, this is the Valve version of it. We've been using this for a while now, which replaced the CE version of Mirage that a lot of people were used to. You know, it's kind of molded after, um, you know, Strike, I guess you could say. Um from the 1.6 and Counter-Strike Source days had a very similar layout. Uh, of course, Strike in 1.6 was a lot different than what it was in Counter-Strike Source in the sense of how B, uh, Upper B worked. It was kind of like an underground B route for Source and, and you know, more of this style for, for 1.6. And so that's kind of, you know, the major difference, I guess, uh, between, the, like, CSGO and Source, at least. Um, so basically the point I'm trying to make is is you've probably seen this map around Counter-Strike just maybe with a different name and then of course a different version in CSGO in the past. Um, talk a little bit about basic strategy. I mean for A, I mean you're typically going to see Terra try to execute the A site with several different smokes that are thrown on a pretty consistent basis. The stairs smoke, probably one of the most important, blocks off a lot of vision from people rotating through connector or through jungle from being able to use these stairs to kind of headshot angle themselves into a peak on palace uh, or just take out maybe water peaks and check you know the A ramp area and things like that. So definitely going to see a smoke on this area quite a lot. No matter how the split is, you're probably going to see a smoke here most of the time. Uh, you'll also maybe see another smoke right next to it. Uh, just further blocking off, you know, the retake coming in from jungle and connector. And then, of course, the CT spawn smoke over here to block that off. And so basically, you just kind of seal and isolate one or two players inside the A site from getting help from their retake. And you combine that with flashes and nades thrown over. You also may occasionally see people throw nades actually underneath the balcony. Like right here, like a molly or something like that, force the CT that plays under balcony to come out. You maybe see that sometimes as well. But then other than that, it's just like kind of standard flashes over and things like that. The only time that you may not see this smoke here is if they're also incorporating mid into the strategy. So there's definitely a lot of different strats where you'll have some type of lurker just waiting out here like the whole round until the execution starts. And then he'll try to pick off rotators and flank through connector. Uh, maybe same kind of uh, idea but maybe coming underpass to connector. And so you may see the smoke not used just because you don't want to block off your own guy flanking from being able to see into the site and help you out. Um, and then some splits just regard, you know, big numbers trying to push through connector. We've seen this quite a lot where you'll see like three people come up mid and they'll just kind of work their way up slowly while you only have like maybe one guy here, one guy here. So, you know, one, one, and then like three. And then you don't really want to smoke once again because you want to be able to kind of help each other out with crossfires as you push your way through. In that case, maybe you'll have like a deeper smoke over here to still block a window room opera from peeking, but you still get your numbers up the connector uh, in your own right. Uh, so I guess basically the most common A splits you'll see are like three people here, two people here, these smokes I discussed, and then A execute. Uh, or you may see three up mid, one, one. Uh, or you may see like one mid, you know, three, one. Are, are some variation of that on, on A splits. That's definitely something to look out for. Also, I mean, as far as B goes, I mean, your primary smokes are going to be inside the window room and inside the connector to try to work your way up cat without being spotted, uh, as well as some combination of people just running upper B. Um, maybe throwing some smokes and flashes over trying to block off these areas from being able to spot into the B bomb site. And so that's kind of like your basic T strategy for this map. Once again, just trying to help out some of the new guys out there who may not be as familiar with this map or the strategy. For those of you old school people, you probably already know all this stuff and I'm just kind of, you know, maybe being redundant, but trying to fill the time before the match starts. Um, 
As far as CT side goes, I mean, you have a lot of different options, whether you want to be passive or aggressive. Uh, usually you're going to see kind of two guys dedicated to the A bomb site in some way, whether that be like one person in the site, you know, one person stairs, or like one person under the balcony, one person site. Maybe you're going to get a little bit aggressive, try to actually get some information at Palace. I mean, there's all kinds of variations of what you'll actually see in A site. Um, you may have an opper, just try to like peek down A ramp uh, from like right here or something. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can really do at A. You can be more passive in the CT spawn, opper, auto sniper from here. The only real downfall, of course, is being able to get smoked off. Um, but I mean, there's all kinds of options here. As far as mid, I mean, you might see just a straight up opper inside window room, just peeking mid. You may see a guy try to get aggressive in the connector, peek mid from here, or, or, or up or below, trying to once again just get this angle on bat cat as they cross out mid. Um, or you may see people jump out window, get aggressive inside the underpass, and, and try to get some information towards upper B. Or, uh, I've even seen some aggression where people actually just kind of hug this wall, work all the way up to the mid box, uh, and, and try to peek down this area and just get super aggro. Um, B, kind of similar situation, you know, people like jump peek van to watch upper B, or they'll move like all the way up here into the corner, just play really aggressive. Uh, or you might have people getting aggressive cat to peak mid. I mean, there's all kinds of different things to go CT side. So I'll try to point those things out as I see them rather than talk about them a whole, whole lot um, before the match starts. But we do have some SK members in here, so I've already kind of run down the Lunatic roster and talked about those players. So if you missed that part, I'm kind of sorry. Uh, maybe you can check the highlight clip later and get that information. Um, for SK, I mean, these guys come from 1.6. Uh, Ocean has been with SK ever since they started in 1.6 for the most part until their transition to CSGO. I guess they've had a lot of roster changes since then. Basically, Ocean and uh, Elsa Mama are the only two people, I guess, that have stuck around since the 1.6 days of SK. Uh, I don't know if TVU ever had any affiliation with them back in the day or not, but I know he is a new pickup for them in CSGO uh, over this past season and definitely a, a pretty solid player. Wabbit, of course, also a pickup. He was playing with Lunatic Esports, actually, or at that time, never good enough last season. Very solid opera to look out for. Uh, basically, the top fraggers for SK usually is kind of Wabbit at the number one spot. Being their opera, he's usually pretty deadly. So definitely, Wabbit is kind of the player to look out for for SK to, to make things happen. However, Char and Tivu also very, very solid fraggers for SK. They're probably like number two, number three on the stats if you're looking at SK for fragging, if I had to guess. Char, of course, a former Counter-Strike Source player, was pretty solid at it, but definitely kind of rose to prominence throughout his CSGO career. Definitely kind of stepped up a level, so to speak, in skill once he moved to CSGO. Um, so yeah, we're just waiting on Elsa. He's the only person that hasn't joined the, the server yet, and that will be when we get things going. Uh, I fixed a title. I'm not sure why it didn't update for you, but for me, the title is actually fixed. But uh, I'm not sure why it's not fixed for everyone. I guess I'll do it again. Maybe if you refreshed, it would be fixed. I'm not really sure. I'll try to fix it now. But the match is about to get started, so obviously going to focus in on that. Update. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get started. We kind of talked about all the players. We talked about the map. We tried to get as much history and information in there as you could want pregame. But now it's time to get things going with Lunatic starting out on the CT side. It will be Daps, Fugly, Shazam, Juvenile, and Naf. Then for SK, it will be Wabbit, Tivu, Ocean, Char, and Elsa Mama. So let's see how things go. It looks like we are going to see a lot of numbers gathering up here over towards the A ramp with one player going to be playing towards the mid. So he'll definitely be that kind of late round worker trying to catch the rotation. Well, the rest of the team is just going to go ahead and try to explode in here on the A site uh, as we are going to go ahead and see them moving their way in there. TV is going to go ahead and catch one flank onto Daps already. So his job has been uh, successful as far as catching that early rotation as it is a five on four here. CT's trying to make a retake. Nice grenade comes in from Shazam and his teammate has also moved into the side boxes. TV now has moved over to the connector, trying to see if he can hold off uh, here as that bomb is down. They're definitely just trying to hold on, prevent this retake. And so far doing a pretty good job as TV takes down Nav. Why are taking down Fugly? So it's definitely not looking too good here for the Lunatic side as SK runs away with it, only losing one member in the process. So definitely a well-orchestrated A execution. Uh, the only real difference is we didn't see the deep CT spawn smoke. It was kind of more inside the site. 
uh, which kind of helped them plant inside of it, and that was kind of a big factor there. And then, of course, Tivu just kind of playing this corner spot, catching Daps immediately, who tried to flank A. I mean, that was kind of really the big things that happened there. So just good, good execution by SK at A. Also a great job from Tivu cutting off that rotation over towards mid. I think he picked up, uh, what, two frags in the round? Yeah, uh, so definitely good stuff there. Now, we are going to see a pretty heavy commitment here from Lunatic on the economical side of things. They're picking up a scout on Shazam, head armor, and upgraded pistols on the other four players. So this is a pretty heavy investment. Um, sometimes you see teams elect just to maybe upgrade pistol armor or just upgrade pistols and light armor and try to, 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 to save up the money. But as you can see, I mean, they, they whittled their money down pretty far. But it's definitely a good chance that this pans out. The CZs are still definitely very explosive guns. And we see people time and time again with the scout actually do really well. And here you see Daps already collecting a Galil for himself after the kill on the chart in the underpass. And he gets a second kill on the Tivu. And all of a sudden, the, uh, the investment here from Lunatic is paying dividends as that starting like a two frags and a Galil. Ocean trying to see if he can turn things back around for SK as he will get that pick at Juvenile and Upper B, which will definitely prompt the remaining members of SK to start bringing the bomb into that area here as it will be a three on four as the bomb makes its way into the site. Of course, it's already been pretty well controlled here. Shazam trying to rotate with the scout, though, does get a hit in. And he will finish it as he will take down Ocean. Bomb is going to get planted at the very least, but it's looking bad for SK unless Wabbit and Elsa can hold off here. And if they do get two kills, they bring it to a two versus two. Elsa also spots the flank here at upper B and gets the kill on the fugly at Cat. So Elsa saving the day right now as what the crap. That sucks. Let's get that x-ray on there. I do apologize for that as Wabbit will go ahead and finish things off. So Lunatic, though, making that a very dangerous round. As you know, of course, they upgraded the CZs and the Scout. And uh, almost came away with it there. I mean, it came down to the wire, but SK is able to fend off the eco, but at a decent cost. They had to rebuy a lot of guns, uh, as you can see, kind of whittling away at their economy. But at the same time, they did still secure it, which is what's most important. Yeah, I had to turn the wall hacks on. I apologize. I know I'm ruining everything, Infinity. I do apologize for that, but let's keep this going. As, of course, we are going to see Lunatic still make a minor investment here, just picking up CZs. Only a $300 cost. I think a $250 on NAF, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, no, he's just at the P2K. Never mind. So, just, uh, just a $300 investment for three of the players on Lunatic. Nothing big. So, uh, trying to see if they can maybe make plays yet again at the close range with those CZs. As you can see, SK being very, very cautious here. Also, just sitting back watching for A flanks. Everyone is sitting back, that's for sure. No one committing to anything. They don't want to get eco. They they risked getting eco last round pretty hard. And so now they're being a, a lot more cautious as they exercise control across the map here. Two at mid. Juvenile going to go ahead and spot it here from the connector. Get some information, but not able to get a frag. And, of course, Shazam has already been taken down to 1 HP. So, so far, the execution here from SK is working out pretty well as they will split upper B and catwalk. Ocean taking out Shazam. TV onto Juvenile, and the bomb will get planted here. Wabbit going to be trading some bullets here through the smoke at the connector, and we'll move up into ladder room, trying to spot someone out. Not able to do so just yet, but that flank is definitely going to be coming uh, possibly from Cat here pretty soon. But it looks like uh, CT's not really going for anything. I think they're just maybe looking for exits. He saw Dap trying to get aggressive here in underpass, trying to see if he can catch a fallback at upper B. He will spot out Char here and deliver a few blows, but no kill just yet. Nath's going to come and back him up. They're definitely looking to see if they can catch anybody exiting through upper B, but no one will be heading that way. Everyone's kind of running through B side in the CT spawn, so no real opportunity here for Lunatic to pick up any exits and pick up any free guns, and so it will just be 3-0 to zero in favor of SK, who have, you know, done their job on the T side so far, short of making it a little bit scary in round number two. Yeah, all bets in are definitely not viewer botting, guys. Don't accuse them of those crimes. They are just the, I guess, the official CSGO Lounge stream for this uh, match. They are the stream embedded on the bet page on the website. So that is why they probably have much more viewership. But that's okay. I'm glad you folks decided to come over here instead. I really appreciate it so very much. As we move on to round number four, the first official full gun round of the half here. Zodentic is going with the five rifle setup. No op for Shazam this time around. And uh, no real head armor either. I guess they couldn't really necessarily afford it. Yeah, you can see they don't have a whole lot of money after what they bought. So they probably couldn't really get what they wanted as far as an op and head armor. 
SK also uh, looking pretty. Uh, they only have a Galil on Elsa. I guess they decide not to upgrade them. Just to try to save money and bank it up in case of a rainy day. You can see XK using those smokes I was talking about pregame on the stairs and jungle and CT spawn. And you see the effect it has. They're able to get the bomb down with very little contention, which means that Lunatic just has to rely on having a solid retake. It is a four on four. Char getting boosted up here on the stairs, takes down Shazam, giving an early advantage here to SK to defend off this retake. And they will try to keep it up here, but Daps is able to deliver a blow, but it won't matter as Tivu and Elsa just chime in with another one. But oh my goodness, is Daps really going to be able to pull this off? I thought for a second he might. As he did definitely get uh, three nice frags there, but unable to take out Ocean in the end to complete the one on four and complete the round for Lunatic, which means SK will just continue to extend their lead as they are now up four to zero. As we do see Lunatic actually buying CZs across the board here. Just a minor investment, only 300 bucks, and with the loss bonus that they currently have, this is no real big deal, and it gives them a chance to maybe shock. You always gotta worry about those CZs uh, if you are the buying team. They are, they are literally a pocket AK with less bullets. I mean, you just gotta kind of have to be cautious about getting close range on those things, which is why you're seeing them. Once again, in this like anti-eco setup, watching the A flank from T spawn, watching mid from far back, sitting back in upper B for a while, not committing to pushing in. Which if they do, Juvenile is right here and this could lead to a frag, but no, Ocean peaks it perfect. He takes a lot of damage, but he comes away with the frag, which means that for now, SK has survived any type of eco humiliation. As Elsa is going to maybe get a, a, a payout from being so patient in T spawn for so long, and in fact he will take down Shazam. And so, SK, looking sharp here. They're not making any real critical mistakes. They're not succumbing to any type of um, CZ buy from Lunatic. They've been pretty well uh, well off in the regard that they're not, you know, giving up rounds that you shouldn't. Um, which is definitely a sign that SK is in control of the game. I mean, that's one of the biggest errors you can commit is to lose to the CZs. But they have definitely avoided it for quite some time. They will get the spawn planted here inside the A-bomb side. They're maneuvering all around the map from B to A. They've definitely exercised full map control, clearing everything out. Daps trying to see if he can catch a frag here onto a low HP player in the window room, but it will not happen here as Tivu will finish off the round with a couple of frags. And it is a flawless victory for SK, not losing any guns, not giving up any guns to their opponent, and that's all you can really ask for. So we'll go ahead and move on here to round number six. SK with the commanding lead of five to zero. As it looks like we are going to see Lunatic setting up, or excuse me, Sapphire Clone is setting up for some type of A execution. Once again, probably going to be looking for these smokes here, here, and here, as we've seen in the past, and is very common. They have Tivu once again, plotching the flank late. This is almost a mirror image of what their first pistol round was in round number one, having Tivu the late flanker in mid while they do the A execution. And so that's exactly what we're going to see this time around as well. Uh, and we'll see if it winds up being as successful as it was in round number one. As we actually see them committing inside the site a lot. They don't want to let these smokes hold them off and force them to retake. They want to be able to contend early. And Fugly is just waiting up here on the balcony. And Els is kind of wasting some nades here. He lost that molly on a smoke. And so that was kind of a waste of money. And Naf hiding at the hazard boxes. Fugly still under balcony. And SK are not checking all of their angles. And it's going to lead to a crucial, crucial round where Lunatic really needed this one to get back into the game, and they are going to come up with it. A little bit of a mistake there from SK. I mean, they got the smokes off that they wanted here, here, and here, as we discussed, but the real difference was is that you saw a heavier commitment inside the site. You had, you know, CTs positioned here, positioned under the balcony, uh, positioned on top the stairs, being able to get aggressive inside the smoke with help from their teammates here, and SK didn't check their spots. They didn't really get a check under balcony as they needed. They did didn't check this spot here before trying to get the plant and it's just little little mental errors like that not you know making sure everything's clear before planting that really led to their demise and so we are going to go ahead and see Lunatic trying to use that momentum to see if they can pick up some more rounds. Some aggression on the catwalk will lead to one frag, but SK trades it right back. But Juvenile hiding an upper B, able to catch two frags in the back and get the bomb down. Picks up an AK for a third, and what a round for Juvenile. 
as once again SK not checking their angles as they press through their spot. And once again, I mean, this is two rounds in a row where they've literally gotten blindsided by someone hiding in a corner that they didn't check and giving up free frags. I mean, that's really been the story of their two losses. As, of course, the money is still strong on the SK side from racking up so many rounds in a row, so they are definitely able to buy here, but as you can see... It, their economy is now kind of in shambles. You know, zero dollars for three of their players, 50 on Tivu. Definitely looking like it's going to be some type of eco situation if they are unable to come up this round. Unless they decide to force Galil's or something crazy like that, they'll definitely have to save if they don't pick this one up. Also, with Lunatic winning a couple of rounds in a row, they've avoided that whole issue of having your money reset when you win one, lose one. So that's good. They're starting to bank up their own cash as well. Uh, so, you know, it's come down to a situation where we could quickly see a 4-5 to five in favor of Lunatic if SK drops this round. Or, at the very least, we'll see SK win, but Lunatic still be able to buy. And so that's kind of where we're at here, uh, as the bomb is once again maneuvering itself into a position for some type of A split yet again. Except no... Well, I guess there is one now coming late to Palace. So it's three Palace, one mid, one... Uh, 3A ramp, and, and that's kind of the, the A split we've seen SK favor quite a lot. Happened on pistol round, happened the round previous, and they're going for it yet again. This time, will they check their spots? This is a mirror image of the previous round where they didn't check their spots before planting the bomb. This time they smoke in different positions that they're actually using. Oh my goodness, this is so cool what SK has done in this round. I'll analyze it for you in a second so you can better understand if you didn't catch it, but definitely a different take on how to hit A here from SK. It's not something I haven't seen before, but it's something I haven't seen a whole lot. And it's something that maybe people are going to think about using a little bit after they watch this match. That was crazy. So basically what we had was, is for the CT side, we had, you know, your guy here and your guy here. Which shut down SK completely the last time they tried to take the A-bomb site. Because they didn't check it. But what is key is the smokes that we saw. There was a smoke here, a smoke here, and a smoke here. And they literally use it to block off this whole area and really focus their all their numbers on killing people at uh, at the stairs and at the in the jungle. That was a really cool strat, a really different take on how to hit the A-bomb site. And uh, yeah, that was just beautiful there. I'm not sure if, if I've really seen that before on Mirage a whole, whole lot. Definitely didn't see it a strat like that at the Major when Mirage was played. I think people will definitely take a look at this a little bit. Definitely a cool strat indeed. I see some comments in chat about it. Sorry I can't really interact with chat a whole lot. I'm trying to focus on the commentary, guys. But if you have questions, I'll be able to answer them after the match is over. That is for sure. As it is a 6-2 to two score line here. Like I said, Lunatic's still able to buy. A double op setup, actually, here from them. Used to seeing Shazam with it, but Dats will also have it as well. SK sticking to rifles. They haven't put an op on Wabbit's back yet. They might do it on the CT side, or maybe they'll change things up if things start to, to stop stop working uh, on their T side. But that is yet to be the case. Well, they're looking for a beast with this time around, and there are going to be three players in the area trying to defend it. Shazam is able to pick up one op frag. Juvenile from the pillar able to pick up a second frag, but Wabbit trades it out, and SK still trying to pursue a plant inside the B side. They do have the bomb. They're trying to work their way in. The retake is definitely very, very kitchen heavy. You see three players in the kitchen, one into ladder room trying to go cat. And they do have the numbers advantage, but they're kind of bunched up in this one little area. And so they could definitely kind of just run into the meat grinder. Uh, but it looks like they're using the smoke to their advantage to get out safely. Fugly will be looking around here. There's one at the cat cubby. He'll get picked up by it. It's going to be Char laying down the double kill. Daps trying to come around cat. He gets one. It's a two on two. Daps looking for more here. Missing the shots here on Char and the cubby. But Shazam will pick him up. It's now a one on two for Wabbit. And Wabbit has definitely killed enough time to secure the round here for SK. And he'll get the kill to add insult to injury. And so thus we see SK continuing to build up a lead here. Right now 7-2. to two. After an excellent A strat. We see them switch over to B. And with a little bit of trouble, they still get the round. And they force an eco out of Lunatic. And now I will breathe again. As Lunatic is, of course, going to go ahead and buy up some CZs here. Just kind of playing their spots, though. Getting a little bit aggressive at the underpass was the one key difference. They've been really passive at mid. Except for maybe one round aggro at Cat, and then on an eco round, they get aggressive at the underpass. 
when it doesn't turn uh, up any profits as uh, SK able to clear that out. And like I said, SK has been really smart about not giving up rounds on these CZ buys, which is something that a lot of teams suffer from. Of course, I buy power famous from suffering from it at Gfinity and previous events. Uh, a lot of teams have issues with it, but uh, SK certainly hasn't fallen to it yet this match, knock on wood. As soon as I say that, Juvenile picks up a kill and so does Naf and the bomb is down at Cat Cubby. So is it the caster's curse? I don't think so. SK still has a huge numbers advantage here, and they make it even bigger with that kill onto Naf and the fact that Shazam is so far away. He's definitely not going to be able to contend the plant, and at the very least, uh, at, I mean at the very most, all he's really going to be able to do is maybe get an exit frag here onto Char and collect his AK. We'll see what happens. Char definitely at low HP, so it definitely gives Shazam that opportunity to try to grab the kill and grab the gun. Char is going to be peeking out here in a dangerous territory, and he will get taken down. Shazam will pick up the AK. Oh, please don't tell me. That would have been cool if it would have been a spam kill, but it's not going to happen. We see that Ocean's actually pursuing this. He doesn't want Shazam to save it, and he will stop it. So great job there from Ocean, not allowing Shazam to collect a free gun. And, of course, SK continuing to push the lead further. As the score is now 8-2, to two, so looking very, very dominant. Yes, I'm starting to eat my words a bit when I said I kind of favored Lunatic in this match as they got the side that they wanted. But SK has had some really cool strats, especially that one we saw at A. And Wabbit will actually pick up an off for the first time for SK. He hasn't really been called on or needed to do that, but they're deciding to change things up a bit, which I like. You know, there's always that old saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But keeping the same strats allows Lunatic to start making adjustments and understand what you're doing. So when you change things up like this and pull out an op for the first time, they're probably not expecting to see an op. You haven't used it all game. And so that might catch someone off guard on Lunatic and give a free frag to SK, but not right now. As Shazam will go ahead and catch Tivu, which Tivu has been really known to play like this, this, this role over here, uh, over at the upper B side or mid, but he isn't going to get caught by Shazam that time around. The bomb's actually down, unless my radar is glitched. Over there at the upper B side, so it looks like we are going to see, I believe that's Char, kind of go over there and grab it. And once again, we are going to see a setup for an execution. Naf and Fugly have a crossfire here between Sandwich and their balcony, which means they're going to be phased by no smokes. I mean, unless we see, like, a smoke here or something like that, uh, the smokes really aren't going to come into play, except for maybe blocking Sh Shazam's op off from helping. But uh, they basically should get, Lunatic should at least get a 2 versus 3 out of this, which should be decent enough to try to challenge. But yeah, it is that same smoke chat we saw before, which isolates these players over here. As you can see, that one guy under balcony not able to make a difference in Ocean. Oh my goodness, Shazam not paying attention. And Ocean comes up with two pretty big frags, and they will use this to work their way into window room where the bomb's already being planted B. What a crazy fake. I guess Char, when he picked up that bomb at upper B, never actually came back towards it. He just stayed at upper B. And once again, SK demonstrating a new variation on how to hit A. I'm not sure if it's brand new. I'm not sure if it's original to SK, if they designed it. And maybe I'm just ignorant. I haven't seen it before. But it's definitely a different take on A. I mean, they're basically just using smokes here, here, and here. Which basically walled off this guy over here. Like, you know, this, this poor fellow over here. It's just having a bad time. He's like, I I can't see shit. This sucks. I'm sorry, bro. You over here, you're by yourself. By like three guys running up this way. That that sucks. And this guy gets owned. Shazam's on top of the stairs. He's trying to peek in the palace with the op. He gets caught. Then these guys just steamroll through here. Meanwhile, the bomb's been sitting up here the whole time. Like, I'm about to fake you guys out. And it totally worked. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a pretty cool variation on how to take A here that we've seen from SK now twice in this match. As we are going to see Lunatic once again having to say they still have an op, but uh, everyone else on CZs, and honestly, they haven't really yielded very many results with these CZ vibes, which doesn't mean they shouldn't do it. I mean, it's a $300 investment, why not? But they haven't really made the best of it, and I don't know if that's because they just haven't, you know, coordinated like pushes or something better with the CZs and took gambles to try to make things happen, or if it's just been that SK has been really smart about, uh, about not falling into traps and allowing these CZs to make a difference. And I think it's probably a bit of both if you really look back at it. But uh, Naf able to get an early frag this time around on the char and actually temporarily got the bomb down. But Tivu trades it out immediately. But Dabs trades right back. But uh, SK keeping it even, not allowing anyone to multi-frag. Wabbit missing a couple of shots here on the Juvenile. Finally going to go ahead and connect it, but Fugly trades it back. And so it is a two versus two and Fugly has an op. And so this is actually not an easy round for SK. 
Let's see what happens here. Bomb still kind of waiting it out at the A ramp. We see a peek here by Shazam on the stairs. Dealing a little bit of damage, but not a whole, whole lot. And he's also, you know, running low on ammo here. Smoke goes up. The bomb's going to make its way into the planning position. Ocean trying to see if he can hold things off. I think he spotted both. No, he didn't spot the other player. Fugly is able to get away without being spotted on the stairs with the op. But now he's been sniffed out. And while he does get the kill on the Tivu, Ocean in perfect trading position. And that's kind of another theme of SK. They've always traded frags. I've very rarely seen a lunatic member really get a multi-frag round. I mean, the only times I can really remember that it's happened was when... There was one round SK went into A and didn't check like the, the firebox and under balcony and they just got, you know, Lunatic got two free frags on them. And then the one round where Juvenile was playing aggressive inside up or B and they didn't check the corner and he got like two frags or three frags. And that's really the, 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 the few times I've really seen it. So definitely good trading uh, by SK in this match as well. That's just really cool strats on A. And of course the other big point, not falling to CZs. So those are like the three key points, I think, for SK's success right now is cool A strats, not falling prey to the CZ, and trading very efficiently. Play-by-play -play guy here trying to give you a little analysis. Not the best, but, you know, I try to give you a balance since I'm casting by myself. I'm sure you want to hear a little bit of both. We are going to go ahead and see SK pursuing some type of mid-strat this time around as they will go ahead and get the kill onto Shazam. So working that mid-control could fall into a B split, but they still have that guy over towards Palace at A, so it could easily fall back to A as well. We're going to go ahead and get that player boosted inside the window room. Fugly continuously being smoked off here in the connector thus far. As I'm not really sure what they want to do with this bomb just yet. Maybe they don't even know. They're just kind of still working picks. TV able to get one, but Fugly trades it right back here from the connector. And the bomb is going to be down. So finally, Lunatic has been in one of the most favorable positions I've seen in the majority of this game. So hopefully they'll be able to close it out here as Fugly continues to get frags. A second one for himself on the char. Juvenile taking Ocean down at upper A. And this is going to leave Labbit all alone with the op here. As he has made his way through the A bomb site, but he's making plenty of noise, so I'm sure they know where he is. A little bit of a pop flash to try to get out of mid. Oh, no, never mind. Getting into ladder room, and Juvenile may not be ready for this, but now he is because Wabbit makes a little bit too much noise, but Nav actually TK'd Fugly in the process. I didn't get to catch that part. That'd be funny to maybe take a look back at and kind of figure out what happened there, but uh, yeah, I think if Wabbit would have been a little bit more quiet after he got into ladder room, he might have been able to pick Juvenile off, but maybe he just didn't have the time. That's, that's most likely what the issue was. I think he only had maybe 12 seconds left, so that is most likely why he wasn't able to, to have the, the luxury of being a bit more sneaky. As we are approaching the final two rounds of the half, and SK, of course, has been pretty dominant. Though Lunatic has found a round here or there, they definitely still are in need of quite a few more. And once again, I think uh, we're going to see th this, uh, this A strat again. I'm not quite sure. I don't really see... Oh, no, this is just a normal execution smoke. It's not the crazy ones, but oh my goodness, Fugly flies right by Char. And a free frag goes to SK as they will go ahead and get the spawn planet in A. And Tivu once again, on the monster flank. And he will catch Daps yet again. And Tivu has been relentless with these big flanks and catching these rotations. But Shazam breaking out here with the op and picking up a couple of frags. It's now a three-on-three. Three. Can Lunatic deliver or will SK hold on? We'll see here momentarily as Shazam and Juvenile continue to pursue here from the jungle and the connector. Naf getting on top of Ticket Boot. Trying to make peeks in here with the auto sniper. There is one over here at the firebox on low HP. It's going to be Wabbit, and he will get taken down. But the bomb is planted here for a ramp. But Shazam takes out Elsa. But Char is still here. They don't think to check it again. But Shazam keeps coming up huge with the op. The, really, the story of that whole round was just Shazam coming up connector with two frags and then delivering the final two blows over towards a ramp to allow Lunatic to defuse. And so, really, just kind of a brilliant individual effort there from Shazam, which... Allows Lunatic to kind of cling on to something. They've had a rough half. They've been down pretty much the whole time. And, and a play like that, maybe boost your morale a little bit. Get you back in the game. This is this the final round? And, and SK making no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They are definitely looking to go A yet again. But they only have one smoke. Uh, they they kind of didn't have really a whole lot of money. I mean, they wanted to get head armor, and they wanted rifles, which is at the cost of not having a lot of smokes. I would have liked to have seen maybe someone sacrifice armor to get some grenades, but, you know, that was their decision, and they are going to pay for it, it looks like here, as they are just getting absolutely mowed down, and that will be the end of it. So, yeah, in a situation like that, maybe they should have thought about not armoring all their players and maybe sacrificing armor on a few guys to get nades, but, you know, it is what it is. 
apparently my game crashed, so apparently I need to go ahead and switch to the overview really quick while I reconnect to GoTV, so give me just a second. I do apologize. This does sometimes happen with GoTV. So fortunately, we didn't miss anything with that crash, so that's good. I do apologize for that. But we made it. So, a great first half. 10-5 uh, to five in favor of Sapphire Kelowna. Definitely was just a really good story of how they executed A. I mean, they had their standard A hit, where they blocked off jungle, connector, and stairs, and CT spawn, and just... You know, made SK, I mean, made Lunatic kind of play for the retake while they got a bomb plant. Now, this started to kind of work against them because you started to see um, the the Lunatic guys kind of play inside the site, like in spots like these that I'm kind of marking off, which kind of prevented those smokes from being effective. But then we saw a new take on A. Uh, that I haven't seen very often here from uh, SK where they kind of threw smokes in these spots here and then they just used it to kind of sweep through and kind of just take these two areas and that was definitely very interesting that worked very well for them uh, keys to success I think in that half uh, for SK I've kind of already mentioned I'll mention it again uh, one was what I just described some really cool A executions that worked out really well um, Second thing was, is uh, they didn't ever fall to the CZs of Lunatic. There's maybe five or so rounds where Lunatic was forced to, you know, buy CZs and save, and they never once turned one of those around. Um, and SK did great with being patient and not falling into any traps and giving up a round that you shouldn't give, you know? And then, I mean, the last point would just be efficient trading, which kind of goes back to not falling to CZs. They were very rarely, when they did get killed by a CZ, there was always someone there to trade it right back and, and, and not allow the guy to pick up a gun or, or a multi-frag. And that was also really crucial. So just, you know, no mistakes, basically. Very little mistakes, I should say, at least. As far as why Lunatic wasn't successful, um... I don't know, it's hard to say. I mean, they definitely held B pretty well for the most part, and retook on B pretty well for the most part. I mean, they lost B a couple of times, but I mean, usually they held off B pretty well. It was really just not being able to hold off the executions. I think one of the biggest things for Lunatic was having no idea what the heck, heck was going on when we saw that those smokes uh, being thrown into sight the way that they were I don't think that I don't think lunatics ever seen that before like these smokes here here and here I don't think lunatics ever seen that before they had no clue what to do um, and I think that that caught them off guard on like at least three or four different occasions that and just they had to save a lot like, like I said there's like about five rounds I can remember where they had to save and that that's obviously painful But let's get on with it here in the second half. Are Lunatic going to be able to make the comeback here? Or will SK be able to close things out? Looks like Lunatic is going to be gambling here on some type of upper B hit. I see one smoke, th two smokes, three flashes. Uh, these smokes are probably going to land like here and here if I had to guess. Or, or maybe like somewhere in this general area. Somewhere in this general area. Just to block off rotators from being able to see inside the B bomb site. As they will go ahead and start making their way in. They're going to come in, do a little bit of damage here, but Lunatic not going to let that uh, discourage them at all. They will start pouring into the site. And they will go ahead and evenly trade out. 
Oh, these smokes landed to block off Cat. Okay, I was wondering what the heck those were. I guess I was off my mark there a bit. But anyway, Ocean left in a one versus three. But look at him go. Already picking up two frags and now it's a one versus one. He has armor. No, he doesn't have armor. But he does have that 5-7, which is really, really deadly. And Das is at low HP. And oh my goodness, if Ocean pulls off this 1v3, that's going to be absolutely devastating. A little tick and he will. Oh my. That is rough. Incredible stuff there. Is he going to be able to get it though? Am I off? I thought he had it. Yeah, okay. I, I, I didn't really mention, oh no, it's down to the wire, guys, and give you like this fake intensity because I was pretty confident he had to defuse because he got the. Oh, the kit was right there. <laughs> I was, if Ocean would have lost that round because he didn't have a kit and the kit was right there the whole time, that would have been uh, maybe a uh, a point of uh, humiliation or something like that. I don't know, but he got it, and that's what matters. Good round there from SK, which I know is very confusing, especially to some of your European guys, because you're like, SK, they're not SK. Uh... Basically, SapphireClona.com, Sapphire Clona is a club somewhere in Canada that Ocean works for, and they kind of sponsor the team, I guess, and that's what that's all about. But anyway, SK doing uh, doing work right now, uh, but it's actually, uh, I mean, I guess it's kind of back and forth, but now it finds itself in a one versus three, and that's obviously going to be tough to try to come back from, and he will get taken down. So SK continuing to build the lead here, 12 to 5 right now. As Lunatic is going to go ahead and be able to buy this round, of course, as they did get the bomb plant in the first round. So we are going to see them AK up across the board, a Galil on Juvenile. That is why SK bought Famases. That's kind of something for you newer players, if you didn't know. If a terrorist team gets a plant on the first round, you should buy Famases and not SMGs or, any, or pistols or anything like that. Um, just because you don't want to have to upgrade in round number three when the T team's gonna buy because they got the bomb plan. So FAMAS at the very least would be the best. As you see some people didn't really buy anything so they're able to get M4s right off the bat. As the Nutsuka's definitely looking to go upper P yet again Tibu is gonna be aggressive here only able to pick up one frag though. He's kind of in an open angle and there's no one left that beat really to trade except for Wabbit at the Cat Cubby but he's gonna be smoked off. And so Lunatic able to make their way in, but oh my goodness, Wabbit just kind of gets through and gets one more frag, delays the plant by a little bit, but it's still a three on three, and it's still looking okay for Lunatic, unless Fugly gets caught, and he will, oh my goodness, the timing on that is rough for Fugly, and so SK does have the advantage here, Elsa is going to miss that nade, but still able to get the frag onto Juvenile at the bench, and so now it's all up left to Daps to try to redeem here for Lunatic. He will pick up one frag, but he only has four HP, and he has to find two more, as the bomb already has been started on the defuse, and Elsa will hold them off as he tries to retake through the window. And so SK up 13-5, to five, probably a quick 14-5, as Lunatic is, of course, not going to have really enough money unless they just force Galil, which is possible, but I think they would rather buy the... No, they are going to force Galil. Okay. It makes sense, though. I mean, you're already down 13-5. to five. You don't want it to go 14-5, to five, and then force yourself into a situation where you've got to, you know, win to prevent match point. So I have to kind of agree with this a bit. It just depends on what side of logic you want to follow. You're going to see Lunatic just kind of storming their way up mid. Char nading and smoking off the connector, kind of blocking off that route, which isolates these two players at A ramp for now because it's a 3-2 split on A. And so these two A ramp guys kind of have to wait things out before, so their mid players can actually get position to help them out here. Chart is going to spot one at A ramp, trade some shots here with Fugly. Elsa going to step up here. He's got to worry about his connector, though. The smoke's still up for now, but it's about to dissipate. Ocean making his way around from jungle. He might try to renade it here, or maybe Elsa will just try to make the play. And Ocean and Elsa double peat the connector here, and it becomes an even trade at three on three. Ocean trying to bring it back here, but Daps will keep Lunatic in as a new do finally have the advantage here. And Daps coming up big yet again onto Char to allow the bomb to be planted. But at the same time, Tivu puts himself into a 1 versus 2. No, Fugly, is this for real? This gives Tivu a 1v1 for such a long time before Fugly can come in and help out. And this could be devastating, but I think Fugly will still make it in time to contend. No, wait a second. Tivu just defuses now. It's pretty much over. But Tivu, of course, has no idea, so that is kind of the one flaw. But now he's tapping the bottom. Fugly playing this pretty smart. And actually, it's going to work out pretty well for Fugly, so maybe I was a bit too critical. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's always a gamble whenever you leave your teammate in a one versus one to make some type of crazy flank. Now, granted, it wasn't a super crazy flank like this one is, which I've seen some people try to make. 
but his flank was still kind of risky. It took some time, and it allowed a one versus one for a long time. I mean, you don't know what happens. If Tibu gets that kill and instantly starts defusing the bomb, you lose the round. Obviously, Tibu didn't have the proper information to make that play, uh, but it was kind of risky, but it still works out for Fugly nonetheless, and so I guess it was a genius play and not a bad one. That's like one of those plays where if it works out, which it did, he looks like a, a total hero, and if it didn't work out, you're like, Fugly, what were you thinking, dude? That was such a long, like, you know, rotation. You know, it's one of those. Either way, Lunatic forces SK on to a save, and they will begin their own A execution. The more standard one with the smokes that we've discussed so many times, so I won't even bother you with them anymore. As we do see Lunatic doing the 3-2 split up here. Ocean up close on the bounty, able to pick up one player, but that's going to be it as Naf and Shazam clear everything else out. Wabbit trying to get aggressive here in the smoke to prevent the plant, and he actually does, but only for a short time as Naf and Shazam will eventually collect the frags, and the bomb will still get planted for the extra 300 bucks. And so it is now 13 to 7 as Lunatic works to close the gap and try to make this a closer game. So we will move into next gun round here, round number six of the half with a score of 13 to 7 as uh, Lunatic has struggled, uh, but recently here they've been able to start pulling things back into their favor as TV tries to get aggressive here at upper B and will get caught. Bomb is definitely looking to go A though, so it's a 2-2 split for SK, which is pretty favorable for the 4 versus 2 that Lunatic's about to get here in A. 3 up the A ramp. Well, actually that bomb's not... Well, okay, they are actually going to go ahead and hit 3 up A ramp and 1 out the palace. And like I said, they'll get a 3 versus 2 out of this for the most part. As Fugly continues to try to kind of throw a bit of a fake over here at upper B with Wabbit. But Wabbit will go ahead and catch the frag. But like I said, that push is coming up A. But now we've seen a third player kind of move into contention here. But Juvenile catches Char over towards CT spawn. And so Lunatic definitely still has the advantage on this take. The smokes are coming up to hold off these retakes. But Ocean coming out from the balcony picks up two before Naf is able to take him down. And now things have been delayed. A nade comes in doing some damage. They're trying to go for the bomb plant. But once again, an aggressive push through the smoke here is going to prevent the plant from taking place. Daps fights himself into a one versus one. He needs to win this. He doesn't want SK to continue to build their lead. He wants to continue this comeback, and they will be playing ring around the rosy through the sight boxes, but Wabbit will come up with the headshot, or not the headshot, but the frag nonetheless. And so it will be SK moving one round away from match point, up 14 to 7. And really, the big thing that we've seen from SK, this is like the past two rounds, even when they saved with CZs and lost, this smoke doesn't seem to phase them. When they know that the bomb's about to be, get planted, they just push right through it and prevent the plant. They've done that twice in a row now. First time, it didn't really matter. That time, it made the world of difference on who won the round, really. As we are going to see Lunatic once again gear up for an A hit. It's kind of a mixed buy. Naf and Shazam only on pistols, a couple of Galils, and one AK on daps. SK fully geared out with rifles and head armor and grenades across the board, so definitely looking sharp. But here comes this 4-1 split on the A, those classic smokes. Elsa able to deal some damage to Naf before that smoke blooms, and so Naf peeks a bit too early and gets caught before the smoke can help him out. And that could uh, prove to be the key flaw in this round that prevents Lunatic from being able to come up with it. They will go ahead and get that bomb planted. Some spam being thrown here through the booth as it is a 5 on 4 retake but Juvenile looking to equalize it here as he does catch Char jumping over the booth but unable to deliver the frag, Char delivers a second one instead Juvenile finally coming up with one but Tivu able to trade it right back here and Tivu has these two players isolated inside the upper Shazam presses through the smoke, gets caught there but there's still one left that Tivu didn't catch but Ocean's there to be the cleanup crew instead and the bomb of course will still be able to get defused, no issue there which means SK has moved to match point at 15 to 7 and Lunatic still doesn't really have money to fully buy. I mean, kind of the disadvantage of what they did last round with their mixed buy is they once again forced themselves into another mixed buy rather than an eco and then a full buy. But given the situation, you know, you're contending to prevent SK from getting to the match point, you kind of have to take that risk. Uh, but either way, it basically led to SK having the gun advantage for two or three rounds in a row, really, which means a good chance for them to go ahead and close this thing out here and now unless the staple gun of NAF can save the day or if these Galils from the others can come up big.
as this time they're kind of faking it. They're sending Juvenile in alone to try to get some picks and force the rotation like it's going to be an A hit, but in reality that bomb is definitely going B. As Juvenile just sneaking his way in. Maybe he's just not going for the fake at all. He's just trying to maybe be a late flank on the rotation. That seems to be the case, but Wabbit has picked up Shazam with an aggressive cat play, and they still have Tivu here in the back, but very low on HP. But he does have Wabbit for support, who will smoke off upper B, which will slow things down for Lunatic, which means all the more important Juvenile plays in this round, which he will get the kill onto Elsa, and he'll collect an AK. Char is still going to be inside the site, waiting for Juvenile to peek, and he will grab the frag. But it's still going to be at upper B, and here comes Lunatic. Tivu's going to be able to hear it, and Wabbit's still in the area, but Fugly will get the kill. But like I said, Wabbit's still posing a threat from the cat. Able to take Fugly down. Three on two. Ocean now coming in with his rotation. Able to take Naf down, and then Wabbit will just finish it off. And so there you have it. 16 to 7 in favor of SK. I apologize if I lost you some skins because I thought that Lunatic was more favored than SK. Um... But yeah, I mean, like I said, SK, amazing strats on their A executions. Definitely a different variation on how A is taken. Uh, instead of smoking off this area and this area, you saw them decide to instead smoke off this line and use it to sweep through this direction. And really, I think, just caught Lunatic absolutely off guard. Not only that, but SK, like I said, avoided losing the CZs which is something that some teams struggle with. Uh, and they also just traded efficiently. Never really allowed the CT team, whenever Lintic was on CT side, to multi-frag and make big plays. There was, it was a very rare. I think there was like one round where Shazam hit a nutty you know, 4K with the op, and other than that, uh, it was very limited on what multi-frag rounds Lintic were able to come up with without being traded on. And so that, that's kind of where I, I give it to SK. That's kind of my breakdown. Appreciate you for tuning in.